Ladies and gentlemen, I've got two huge clips for you today. One from Jamal Paddy Hapatir, who's diving into chips, and then another from Kathy Wood, who breaks down one of the most important reasons as to why we might be on the cusp of an economic boom in America. Chips Act is, is very different than how it started. So, is, is the, that fair? Yeah, because yeah. the Biden administration viewed the $50 billion as, I'll give you 10%. You build a $60 billion plant, I'll give you a $6 billion. And, uh, and so, why does that not work? Like, why, why would that not have worked? Or why was that not working when you came in? Why would you give $6 billion to TSMC, which is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, when their stock is worth a trillion? <laughs> right. So what Donald Trump does is says, hey, hey, how about this? How about this? I'll charge you 100% tariff. How about that? And then the guy says, okay, I'll build in America. See, I don't have to give you six billion. Like, you know, Donald Trump can dissect it. Yeah. Right. In a paragraph. Yeah. In a paragraph. Right. So what we did is we, we said to TSMC, look, you signed the contract. There's 20 pages of DEI stuff. In there. You need to hire a blind. DEI stuff. Oh, you have to hire a blind contractor. You have to have like, <laughs> Let's stop, uh, stop, stop. you know, trans, lesbian engineers. I'm not kidding, by the way. And, you know, so think about the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, right? How many lithography engineers does Taiwan have that are female, let alone what their sexuality choices are? Right. They've never had a female. They're all men. Right. So I said, listen, you're in breach. Right? Everybody thinks like a Republican will just rip that stuff up. Not this kind of Republican. This kind of Republican reads a contract and says, you know, you you're in didn't, breach of the DEI company. You covenants. didn't build a daycare center in the middle of your clean room fab. Like you signed that contract. So you're in breach. Okay. So how about this? How about add 100 billion? So instead of building 60 billion, you build 160 billion. Right. And we agreed. So then I feel better. And then do you waive the DEI requirements? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Hey, build another 100 billion, we can rip that stuff up. No problem. So what happens is you now have a $165 billion plant going in. And I think, I'm going to let TSC, TSMC announce it, but they are going to get much bigger, even from the $165 billion. And this is, remember, this is a factory yeah. that makes the stuff that NVIDIA sells for five times higher. Okay, let's talk about NVIDIA for a second. You did a deal at the end of this year. I don't think we've ever seen a deal like this. And you can tell me if it's wrong. But you control the export licenses. And as you said, Jamath, we don't want our adversaries to get the most advanced silicon, which makes sense. And then you struck an agreement with Jensen, where now I think it's the H200s, Yes. Which are not quite the most advanced chips, but maybe one generation before. They're go more to China. advanced than what China makes. Right. But in return, you got a 25% marketing fee. What do you call it? Rev share. Tariff. Tariff. Just describe to us the construction of that deal and what it means for these kinds of deals in the future. So Jensen Wang, who runs NVIDIA, is you know, obviously a businessman of extraordinary capacity can't run incredible. a five trillion dollar company yeah. unless you're like incredibly impressive impressive so yeah. he comes in and I, and I promised him in the beginning when i first met him that i would help him have really easy access to the president because he's a national treasure yeah right and and our great companies are national treasures for america so so he his argument to the president if you buy it or not is that if you shut off China entirely, then all of their all of their economics go to their national champion to build new stuff. And all their economics go to that company and that helps that company grow. And that if you give them better than what they have, you don't have to give them your best. You just have to give them better than what they have. Mm -hmm. Right? This is his argument. Then they'll give less to their champion right, and more to you. And, and it, it'll have a positive economic relationship with China and positive for us overall. Now, 
There are plenty of people who disagree, right? But that was Jensen's argument. And that was the discussion, the argument, the debate that we had. And then when that was done and over, then the president said, and you got to give me 25%. <laughs> so the 25% was a throwaway. Right. But it was like, hey, look, if I'm doing all this for you, you still got to give me 25%. So the way we're doing it is he has to send the chips to America. We test the chip to make sure that he hasn't enhanced it in any way. Okay. Because the H20 was oddly enhanced. You know that it had yeah. it had less flops but more yeah. memory. In fact, it had more memory than the H100, which one could argue was a little, you know, not everybody knew that. Let's say it that way. So we test it. On the way in, we can charge it a tariff, regular twenty five percent tariff, and then we can give export licenses to who he wants. And to then sell he to. sends it to China, and then and he sends it to China, or he sends it, to, you know, whoever he's selling it to. So right. I think we the president. This is the president's deal. And, and my job is to make sure all the smart people are in the room with, with both opinions. Howard Lutnick just walked Chamath through how Trump's team renegotiated the TSMC deal instead of the U.S. government paying them billions to build in America. They threatened tariffs and got TSMC to commit $165 billion instead of 60. Then with NVIDIA, the government also worked out something interesting. Jensen, NVIDIA CEO, can sell H200 chips to China, which is one generation behind the current tech, but is still better than what China can make domestically in exchange for a 25% tariff with all chips being tested in the US first to make sure they haven't been enhanced. So firstly, the subsidy approach, which assumed you had to pay companies to do what you want if you're a government. The US government was going to pay TSMC $6 billion, and then maybe they would build a $60 billion fab in Arizona. But the new approach completely flipped that. Threats from tariffs got them to commit almost three times as much capital. TSMC has a market cap of over a trillion dollars. They didn't need American subsidies. They need American markets. And then the NVIDIA deal is also pretty significant long term as well. NVIDIA CEO and Jensen Wang's argument makes complete sense to me. If you completely cut off China from advanced chips, all of their R&D money will flow to their own domestic champions trying to catch up with America. Give them access to chips which are better than what they can make in-house, but they're not America's absolute best, and Chinese companies keep buying from Nvidia and other companies like AMD instead of funding local competitors. This means that China will be spending money on NVIDIA chips instead of investing billions trying to replicate them. The 25% tariff is an interesting part. Revenue flows to the US government every time one of these high performance AI chips crosses the border into China. And requiring chips to route through US testing facilities first means America sees everything which is being sold, how much, to whom, and whether the specs match what was approved. Some people will say selling any advanced chips to China is risky, maybe, but the alternative is China pours everything into domestic chip development and eventually gets there anyway, just without America making money or maintaining visibility into what they're buying and building. This approach keeps American companies competitive, generates tariff revenue, and maintains US control over the most critical technology infrastructure in the world. Way better positioning, than hoping subsidies. I think both these situations have been handled pretty well so far. It's way better than hoping subsidies bring companies to the States and export bans somehow stop China from developing their own capabilities. Speaking of chips and AI, I made a course on AI I wish I had when I first started researching the topic. If you want to get lifetime access, check out the link below. Heads up, the price goes up when we add new modules and we'll be adding something soon. Now to Kathy Wood. 2026 uh, is in the U.S., the midterm elections. Uh, and President Trump does not want to be a lame duck. So I have a feeling uh, that he is going to work uh, with his crypto and AI czar, right, uh, to, to do a few things. One, make sure we get that de minimis uh, uh, ruling through. Uh, make sure. So because you know, grassroots is where a lot of what we've been talking about is going to happen. 
Um, but also, it seems as though there's been reticence about actually buying Bitcoin for the strategic reserve. So far, so far, it's confiscated. Uh, or, the original intent was to own a million Bitcoin. Yeah. So I, I actually think they will start buying because I think this will help Trump in a couple of ways. The midterm elections, part of the reason he won uh, won the presidency, I think, was the crypto community. Um, yes. And uh, another reason, of course, is his family is all in on Bitcoin and and other uh, crypto assets. And uh, they have, you know, we talked about the dats earlier. They've kind of fallen apart this year. So um, I think he's got all kinds of reasons to do this. But the most important one is he does not want to be a lame duck. He wants to have another one or two productive years. And uh, I think I think he sees crypto as as a path to the future. Kathy, just like I think David Sachs said that it had it had to be fiscally neutral to be able to. Uh, do you think they're going to budget, budget neutral? Budget right? neutral, right. Budget but, neutral. Budget neutral. The second thing that I think we'll see next year is a big surprise in GDP growth okay. because of the OB3 and the corporate tax deductions. Like our corporate tax rate in the United States, the effective tax rate has dropped to 10%, which is the lowest in the world for any developed country. Uh, so I think the and and we have accelerated depreciation as the primary reason. You put a manufacturing facility in the US, think this about Bitcoin, about this Bitcoin money. You put a manufacturing facility in the US, uh, if you start building it by the end of 28, you in the first year of service will be able to depreciate it 100 percent in year one, not over 30 to 40 years. So you get huge tax refunds. Uh, so I think we're going to see massive growth and the deficit. Right. Uh, th th they're going to have more degrees of freedom to, right. in which to work now. I think a good way to start would be buying MicroStrategy, right? They have 600K Bitcoin. So if you want to get to a million, that's an easy oh, place it has to, to go start. Below go. MNAFO, yeah. right? Uh, I'll just add one more thing, Rod, because you spurred another thought. Uh, in our early days with Bitcoin, we thought, we thought that uh, countries would adopt it uh, uh, much earlier than they have. Um, and that, that, we could have an emerging market uh, currency crisis as a result. Um, I think if the U.S. actually says, OK, now we're going to buy, that's going to spur a lot of other governments to think this thing through. Do they want to be hostage to the dollar, you know, and mon U.S. monetary policy? And, you know, no, they don't. So put some Bitcoin in uh, in your reserves um, that could in turn uh, really create, you know, get us much closer to really very few currencies that really matter. One of them, Bitcoin. Uh, I think dollar will still be, you know, I think the dollar, especially with the stablecoin movement, will be the other. But the emerging market currencies, I think, uh, could could experience uh, some serious downside volatility if this happens. Super boring, but super important. The 100% first year depreciation rule just made America the cheapest place in the world to build new factories, and most people have no idea this is happening. Kathy mentioned that America's effective corporate tax rate dropped to 10%, which is lower than any other developed country. But the bigger deal is accelerated depreciation. Okay, it sounds super boring, but this stuff is critical. If you start building a manufacturing facility by the end of 2028, you can depreciate 100% of the cost in the first year of operation instead of spreading over, let's say, 30 or 40 years. That creates massive tax refunds immediately. Most people think tariffs are bringing back manufacturing to the US. Tariffs are helping, but this depreciation thing is way more powerful. Say you're Intel and build a $20 billion chip fab in Ohio. Under the old rules, you would depreciate that over 30 or 40 years. So you get, let's say, $500 million in deductions per year. Under the new rules, you write off the entire $20 billion in year one. If you're profitable elsewhere, that $20 billion deduction wipes out taxes on other income immediately. 
the government basically funds a huge chunk of your factory through tax refunds. Companies optimize for after-tax returns. A factory that costs $20 billion but generates a $7 billion tax refund in year one effectively costs $13 billion. That changes every single calculation about where to build. Europe can't match this. Their corporate tax rates run 20 to 30% and they don't allow this kind of accelerated depreciation. China has cheap labor, but their effective tax situation for foreign companies is complicated and risky. So America just became the obvious choice for anyone building serious manufacturing infrastructure. And Kathy's connecting this to GDP growth and deficits. When companies build a $20 billion factory in Ohio instead of Taiwan, that's construction jobs, engineering jobs, supply chain jobs, all the support infrastructure. That shows up as GDP growth, and higher GDP means more tax revenue overall, even with lower rates and accelerated depreciation. The government loses revenue in year one from the depreciation, but gains it back over time from all the economic activity the factory receives. The timing on this is super important. Companies have until the end of 2028 to break ground. So every major manufacturer is racing to get projects started before that deadline. TSMC, Samsung, Intel, they're all committing to massive US facilities right now. And I want to make this clear. This isn't about Trump or Biden or policies. This is pure economics. Someone made the US the most attractive place to build factories by changing the tax code and capital is flowing to America because of it. 10 years from now, when people ask why advanced manufacturing came back to America, the answer probably isn't going to be tariffs or national security. It's going to be the boring depreciation rule and nobody outside of a few CFOs really understood. Cheers. Picture this, a potential client searches for what your business offers and your YouTube video appears. Before they've even booked a call, they've built trust with you, turning them into a warm lead. That's why our clients are hitting $100,000 months because YouTube turns attention into authority. If you run a business, book a call and I'll show you exactly how to make this happen.